All right, all right, all right. Hello, everybody, and welcome. We are going to be taking a look at me playing Bronze to GM beginner build orders against actual pro gamers and high-level grandmasters on the ladder. So I decided to go out on the ladder and just give myself a challenge for a day, and I said, you know what? Let's see if I can play the very beginner build order, the one that I'm teaching in silver, gold, and so on, and actually beat pros with it and people on the ladder. My very first game was right here against Trigger. In the bottom right, we've got Trigger, Canadian Protoss, one of the best players in North America right now. And I was like, okay, cool. So we're doing pool first. Normally I go hatch first. So it's a little different. Uh, we're going to be going across here on Pride of Altaris with our Overlords to scout. We're going for that pool gas. Now Trigger's opening up with a really curious build order. He's actually gone two gates over there in front of the gold base. So he's going to go two gates, Cybercore, I guess into a nexus. Where's that Cybercore go though? Cybercore there. Okay, interesting. So he puts the Cybercore up there. So he's doing a forward two gate. So it's like a semi proxy. He's going to shove adepts at me and take a gold base secured behind it. And then he'll wall off here, probably with like maybe a Twilight Council and another gateway and, and recall probes if he has to. Gold base builds really powerful on this map, but I've always piled my second overlord over here. So I will actually find that very shortly. My Zergling's going to run straight past that probe. For anyone who's wondering, we're playing on my Starlord account because it's different to my main account. So I wanted to play against noobs so I could get easy victories uh, with this account. And then it went and matched me with Trigger. Just kidding, guys. This has actually got a lot of my cheesy games I play on my Starlord account. It's got higher MMR than my main account. So I was like, oh shit, first game versus Trigger. Are you kidding me, dude? And then I scout two gateways and I'm like, what even do I do here? I'm like, look, he's doing such a gimmicky build. We have to react to this, right? Now, there's standard reactions that are in the build order for beginner bronze to GM. Obviously, I've got to react a little bit harder because I know what he's doing with securing this gold base. And I'm like, all right, first game. I, I honestly don't even know what I would tell a beginner to do in this scenario, other than you're kind of being proxy, but also you're not. He's clearly just trying to rush the gold base. And so he's doing it this way. So I run these two Zerglings around. I go for 10 Zerglings. I have already got Link Speed on the way and I decide to not pull off gas here. I go, nah, let's just make more Zerglings. Try to number one, shut down these adepts from killing all of our stuff. Number two, try and put some pressure on if we can and take him out. Now these adepts will clean up my Zerglings inside his main base. My brain is racing because I'm like, dude, I'm not used to this opening. I haven't played this against super high level players. I don't know what to do right now. I've only got 23 workers. I'm like, okay, well, at least those adepts got lured back. I think he made a big mistake by not walling his base off. So I'm like, I guess I can sneak these lings around and maybe do something. And I do have one pervy overlord. I realize if I can take that shield battery down, things could go my way. Now, interestingly, he's only built two gateway units. Gone straight for Twilight and Glaives. This is the greediest build I have ever seen, especially versus a, a pool uh, a pool first version. This is not a hatch first build that I'm doing. Sees my links coming out, and we're going to try and surround him with those Zerglings, but meanwhile, more importantly, we're going to get rid of the shield battery, and if we could depower the pylon and take uh, depower the gateways and take out the shield battery, that'd be huge. These Zerglings are finally going to get us around as well. They're going to get both of those Adepts go down, and we depower the gateways at 90%, and Trigger just has to tap out. Okay, well, literally, we didn't really get to see two base Roach. I just built Zerglings and won the game. Okay, uh, already. And remember, this is a challenge I wasn't expecting to win any games. Already surprised at this point. I was like, did I just beat Trigger, who I normally can never beat? Maybe there's something to opening up with the pool first. All right, so going into our next map, we've spawned here ZVZ. Very next game up against Uko. Guys, normally 56 to 6k MMR, 5600 to 6k. Really high level Zerg. I always say he has Raynor's mechanics and the brain of a baboon. And we can see it here. He's forgotten to build his Overlord for a solid four seconds there. So thankfully we've got him reading Twitch chat. He's a little slow at his next drone as well. So we can... Eh, a few small mistakes from him there. I do like to make fun of Uko because he does play a very weird style. Like I can never understand what he's thinking. There's a few really good Zergs who do this. Jim Rising is one of them. They're, they're very good players, but they play on a different mental plane than I do. And even when I ask them for explanations, I'm like, so why'd you do that? It never really makes sense to me. Um, so I, I was really worried going to this because I'm like, dude, I'm not used to opening pool first. It's a big map. I can't do any zergling pressure off this. So we're meant to go 17 pool, 17 hatch, 17 gas. And I was like, how do I turn this into a not shit build? And I was like, well, roach pushes off two base aren't too bad. But I was like, look, I think I need to do it a bit sharper and tighter than possible. So I was already thinking, how can I make the push kind of more all in? And I was like, okay, well, if we just do a road speed push, no plus one upgrade, but maybe we build the Evo to pretend we're getting the upgrade. And it's just like, get road speed as quick as possible. So I was like already thinking, okay, we can't get link speed. I was often getting link speed in bronze to GM, 
To make this work against pro gamers, grandmasters, all these guys are top 20, top 50 on the ladder. Most of them are top 10 that I've played so far, especially Trigger and Uko are both top 10. And I was like, okay, if we skip link speed, because we're not going to use that, get a quicker layer. And if we skip a fourth gas, maybe just go three gases, I was thinking like, maybe I can make something out of this. And notice I'm not building a single pair of Zerglings. I'm like, nah, drones, 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 get the queen, get the overlord next. I should be putting an overlord right now. And just try to like defend with two or three queens, build a roach horn, and then just do a roach shove. And I'm like, I, I the only way I see this working is, you know, that last game, obviously opponent went for a a super gamble. Trigger played super risky. He should have just kept building Adepts constantly out of the gateways and then delayed the Twilight and whatnot. But in this game, I'm like, it's only going to work from surprise factor, right? I'm, I'm hoping at this point that like, if we can just lean into that push and he's like, well, you wouldn't just do a two base roach speed push with no upgrade and nothing else and like 37, 39 workers, something like that. Like, no way, that'd be stupid. So I'm kind of counting on Uko not expecting me to play like a complete moron in this game. So we're going to hope Uko is playing very smart. Now he's fully pulling off gas and going link speed. So this is a really peculiar build for him as well, right? Um, his third base also seems really late, but he changes his mind, pulls his drone back. And I think this is maybe because he sees that I don't move out to take my third. He's sending a few links out to scout and he's going to go and he's actually going to build a third queen immediately. <clears throat> Does inject his hatchery in the main, creep tumor on the natural and a fourth queen. So he's playing a four queen zergling speed opening. But remember, he's already built a bunch of Zerglings here for no reason. Six Zerglings for no reason. I don't know why he's doing that. I don't know if he's confused because I haven't taken a third or what. We're going to pull drones to make sure he can't get into scout. And we can see, kill those two Zerglings. We put the Roach Warren down. He does not know about that Roach Warren. But I want it in the wall because if he Ling Floods, I'm going to need to build an Evo and defend with Queens. We've got a third Queen. That Lair is on the way. I, I kind of wish I started that earlier, guys. That's kind of late. I also wish I put that Creep Tumor up here so I could wall off a bit easier with Evo Chambers. Now my Queens are moving forward right now, but he's got some Lings coming out and I see Queens coming forward. He's got a third base going down that I don't know about as well. And this is a bit of an awkward spot. His Zerglings are gonna run in. My Queens out in the open. This was a little risky for me and it means he just goes past. So he sees that I'm going Roaches. I'm still droning. I've got no other fighting units. We quickly pull our drones and oh, we do phase the drones out of there. Okay, so the drones barely survive there. We don't lose a single drone. We've killed seven Zerglings. We've lost one over. Overlord, trying to move my overlords forward to get vision because I don't know what the hell he's going. And I remember at this point, I said, look, he's still building Zerglings. At this point, I mean, we've seen a handful of Zerglings. Um, I, I did see Link Speed kicking at the end there. I, I didn't see a third base. I think he might be playing two base Muta. So I'm like, dude, I got to get Roach Speed started right now. And I've got to mass Roach to get across this map. I'm even hitting a 44 supply block, which might seem terrible, but it's actually not too bad. And the reason is, I've decided I want to go so all in. I'm only putting two on each gas, 13 on the minerals. And I did end up with a fourth gas because I was still following the build. And I was like, we go four gas. And I realized like, dude, I should have stopped at three gases. There's no way. If I take any longer, he's going to have muters out. So I was like, I need to make roaches, roaches, roaches. I got to have like 20 roaches, roach speed. If I hit him any later than six minutes, I'm straight up dead. And this is the point where I'm like, okay, I'm thinking about moving out to take a third now. My queens move down there or at least faking take a third. Obviously I'm so all in. I can't really afford a hatchery for no reason. So the queens are kind of out there. And at this point, I don't see a Zerglings flooding out this left side, which is a big problem for me. But my overlord is now going to catch these Zerglings. So we see some lings coming. And at this point, I'm actually kind of feeling okay about it. And the reason is I don't care about these queens. I'm like, if I can just kill some Zerglings for these queens, notice I hide some of my roaches back there. The other roaches do run forwards. So I'm like, okay, okay, all right, all right, let's go. The queen pulls back, the Zergling's running on forwards there as well. We've got injects going down. Roach speed is getting very close to done. It's not ready yet. And now at this point, I'm 100% convinced he's got to be playing muters. Little do I realize, he just took a delayed third and is just droning. And he's just taking a super late lair Roach Warren Evo Chamber. So I was so off the mark on what was happening in this game. So he's going to come and go for a surround. I'm going to have to try and survive. Quick Ravager Morph saves all three of those. Remember, they have five armor. So Zerglings only do half a damage a point. But this is buying invaluable time. And I'm getting really worried. Roach Speed is done. It's 5.30. I've got to push. i got to go right now. Once again, we stop those Zerglings. We kill a bunch of them. We're shoving forwards across the map. This is a complete all-in. I don't have a third hatchery. I've got a second Evo and a Queen in the wall in case he does run around. And my Roaches and Ravages just going for broke. He's gone to 52 drones against the two base player. He's gone incredibly greedy. And remember, all those Zerglings he built aren't going to help his Queens here. He's got a few transfusers, but we just start focus firing one-shotting these units and we've got way too many roaches and ravages and here i am with the simplest most inflexible game plan of make roaches with roach speed try to get a third base behind it and i've just killed 
off of a pool first opening, which is less efficient. I've just killed two of the top 10 players on ladder. At this point, I was kind of going, what's happening? I expected to lose four out of five games doing this on the ladder in GM, but to learn a lot from the losses and kind of go, oh, and if we can get a win here or there, it'd be cool. To win my first two games, at this point, I was super shocked. All right, the next map, we went into Curious Minds and I was up against Clan Dick's Faz. Faz is an Aussie legend. He's a bit of an Aussie battler, hangs about 5-1 on the NA ladder. He's a very good Terran player who I knew would be a tough match, uh, especially because he can play very safe. And I was like, man, if he gets tanks on the high ground, that's going to be really tough. But look at that, guys. People run into that Star Lord account. They know I do a lot of weird builds and cheese on this account. Already quaking in his boat boots, misplaces the depot and cancels it. This is a really small map, Curious Mind, so it's good for getting across with a quick roach push, but I was also really worried about getting to the roaches without just like dying to a Hellion run by or something like that. Um, and, and generally, what else, where else was gonna happen? I also realized that, hey, whenever I was teaching Hatch first um, with beginners, I often say, do a drone scout. And even though with a pool first, you don't really need it, I was like, let's just show the drone scout to kind of show, hey, that thing, which you never see pros do, but they tell beginners to do, let's actually do it, you know, can. Can bronze to GM things? Can the advice for the noobs actually work at pro level? And I said, yeah, sure. But how do you adapt it to the pro level? Well, you actually micro it. You use that APM. You say, hey, let's just pretend I'm a Protoss player. Let's be a dickhead. He's on Clan Dicks. He should know all about dickheads. And this is Captain Dickhead, which is what I call any drone that comes in with an inordinate amount of attention on harassing the opponent. And already we forced an extra SCV off the line, already already got one. Now, he's faced this many times before because I love to screw around with this. So I know he's gonna kind of chase me. So I, I, I kind of pretend to go home. And the main thing I wanna get is I wanna block this command center going down. So you can see I'm already queuing up that drone to come back in just before a minute 40 and start blocking. And he thinks I, go, I went home, he comes down and he's like, ah, oh, you bastard. Ah, oh, you bastard. So he hasn't got any damage on my drone. As he hits 400 minerals, we start blocking and my drone goes, hey, dickhead, see, I don't want to be ya. Ha ha, did you, oh, sorry, did you, did you guys want to build here? Did, did you want to build here? <laughs> Hides in the extractor as well, knowing the Reaper's about to pop out. He finally gets the command center down, but a massive delay on that. Behind it, we've also got two Zerglings, or four actually, that are going to try and sneak around the map, get past the Reaper and do even more damage. Now we've got a hatchery coming up. I'm trying to think about, I'm like, how many guys on gas? How many on minerals? Do I queue the second queen? And I make a crucial mistake, which is I let Captain Dickhead finish building. I was meant to cancel that, bring him back out and start nibbling the SCV. And that would have forced the Reaper back to defend potentially. Would have got a few hits in before the Marine was here. And I could have popped that out later to do some damage. So this was really unfortunate. I now see the Reaper there and my Zerglings do decide to try to run the gauntlet. So I'm like, all right, screw it, let's go. So my Zerglings try to just run on in there and they're gonna go after the Marine and the SCV building that command center. So notice I split two links on the Marine, one on the SCV. And do we get that? No, a second Marine is queued out as well. So he plays it really safe. Imagine though, if I pop the drone out there, maybe just maybe it provides enough hit points and damage to kill that. Behind this, guess what? It's the same as the standard build injecting, injecting, not pulling off gas. But once again, I've decided, look, a non-negotiable change to the beginner build order is if we're just going for a two base roach push, we can't be making wing speed. I'd often teach a beginner player to do that just to get used to making wing speed every game. Uh, even if you only use it for a handful of zerglings, gives you a bit more flexibility and just gets you used to one of those things you're gonna do 90% of the time when you move on to, to more solid play down the track. But here I was like, okay, bam. Get up the gases. That lair is really late, man. Oh, this lair is so late. Roach Warren goes down. Where's that lair? Still trying to figure out how I want to adapt this build. And you can see that's a really crucial mistake for getting that lair. That is huge. Oh man, that lair is good. Because every second the lair is delayed, it delays Roach Speed. And it stops your ability to really do much damage to the opponent. He's building a Cyclone and a Medivac right now. I think he was worried about a Roach Push follow-up anyway. And my lair does start, but very, very late there. And that's going to delay... Like I said, Roach Speed and everything else. So I'm going to be forced to kind of go out for a third base on 44, which is a more standard version of the build. Maybe take the fourth cast, drone up a little bit, and not be as focused on killing my opponent with this push. The Reaper being a bit of a dickhead. The drone is getting escorted, hiding behind the Queen's skirt there. Pokes his little head out and says, no, there's a Reaper there, fuck that. The Reaper will go down if he's not watching. Ooh, bit of a mistake there from Faz. Does come down and kills the Overlord on the pillar though, nicely done. And now he's got a flexible little pressure of Cyclone Marine. So if I was really good, I would have noticed that. There was a Cyclone. I would have pulled all these Overlords back. I kind of start pulling them back, but only a little bit. And I don't have any units. 
right now. I really need to get out a few Ravages to defend this, but I don't have them just yet. So we're building three Roaches. I got a couple Queens, but we're going to take some losses here. And this cute little pressure from him is really going to slow me down. Lair is now finished, but this is distracting me from starting Roach Speed as well. Roach Speed, pig! Roach Speed! So guys, this is me doing a being a builder. I'm messing it up, man. My adaptations to make this work appropriately just aren't coming in. Roach Speed is like a minute late on starting. This is, remember, I was pushing at 5.30 versus Uko. In this case, Roach Speed isn't going to be finished till after six minutes. And that is not very good. Luckily, the Queens will get some damage on the Medivac, which is kind of cute. The Roaches are there. We've got a few Roaches in the main as well. So we should be able to defend this. What I don't know, though, is that he's going up into a two base push. So I should be sending an Overseer to Scout as well right now. But I don't realize right now he's got three racks, a factory, a starport. He's building up for a big two base push. He's going to take a very late third behind that. And here I am just trying to macro up. Ooh, get that queen back. Don't be throwing your queen away, bro. Got a queen out here as well. Cyclone, two marines, medevac still being a nuisance here. Oh, run queen, run, run, run. Oh, she will get a few hits on the medevac at least. But yeah, she's going to be toast. Queen does go down. Roach speed is there as well. The medevac's going to pull on back. And at this point, I'm kind of confused. I'm like, do I commit to the Roach push anyway? I'm like, ah, uh, maybe. I don't know, dude. He's seen no drones on my third, but I'm like, ah, uh, let's just do the build. Doesn't matter if it wins or lose. Let's stick to the beginner build order. So I'm like, I'm massing Roaches. I have no idea. He's massing up for his own push. He's getting a double drop going. Uh, and this game's really silly at this point. It's like, we're both on equal workers. We've got not that many upgrades or anything. He's going to come across with the drop while building more tanks and medevacs, Marines pumping out. And I'm like, okay, time to push. I have no idea that he's sitting there. He's preparing his push. So I'm going across the map with my blind push. He's going across the map with his blind push. I'm sending a Zergling out. It barely goes past that army without seeing it. it goes to the watchtower. And I'm like, oh yeah, cool. He, he must just be chilling at home. Let's send the Overseer ahead. Bam, out of nowhere comes 20 Marines. And I'm like, whoa, what? So I run forward and I'm like, wait, there's only a tank and a handful of Marines. I take a few nasty shots with the units messing up their pathing, but he doesn't even block me there. That tank goes down. We're going to overwhelm him. Unfortunately, my Roach Warren's at the front of my base. And that is a disaster in this base trade. If I knew that army was coming, we immediately do try to rebuild the Roach Warren in the back. We're overwhelming everything there. But now it's going full base trade. The Marines and the Cyclones coming in. They're going to gun down a lot of these drones. Dude, if I knew this push was coming, I could have just defended this push, shut it down, and then counterattacked across the map. That would have been the way to make this work. Oh, but as it is, I'm losing all my drones, all my roaches as they pop. I can't get anything out. The power of Stim Marines and Metavax, they're so good in a base trade. But I'm like, maybe if I can just kill everything as it pops, maybe I have enough roaches to take him out here. I'm like, I believe. I believe in the dream. Three roaches and two zerglings there. Not really enough to kill those units as they pop out. Here we go. A tank does pop out. He's trying to micro it. Oh, nice micro attempt by him. He does actually kill one of these roaches, but looks like we're going to kill every single SCV and Marine that's popped. He's got very little back at home. He's going to head home to try and defend his base. He actually should just win the base trade because he can just lift off buildings. I can't do that. So I think this is a huge mistake for him at this point to go home. He really should just be doing that. I've got three drones still. So I'm actually going to try and rebuild my drone count here and do that one. But you know what I should be doing instead of that, guys? I could have built pure Ravages. I'm going to gather units from both sides and I kill the Cyclone, but this, the buildings are distracting me. I'm trying to get in on top of these Marines, but oh, the Medivacs are healing them. It's hard to focus fire. It's such a close fight. If I can kill these Marines, I win this game, guys. If I can kill these Marines, I win this fight. Six Roaches versus six Marines, five Roaches, four Roaches. The, the Marines aren't dying anymore. I, I didn't focus fire. I get him down to five Marines, but I'm down to just one Roach, and those last five Marines end up winning in the game. I've only got eight drones out. Dude, if I morph those into Ravages, I have 700 gas. Instead of building those three drones, three drones is 150 gas. That could have been six Ravages. Imagine I could have spread a few biles on him and he'd be forced to move and shoot. He couldn't just unload and stim and fight, which is what he was able to do. So if I made Ravages there, I actually could have salvaged this despite all of the mistakes I made. And for anyone out there who's like, oh, you need to play perfect to do X or Y, or this is so hard or impossible. Let this game serve as a reminder to you of the fact that you can play very, very imperfectly, even at GM. You can do beginner build orders that aren't really optimized. And you know what? As long as you do it in a cohesive way that makes sense. In this case, I was really pushing towards two base roach pushes as much as I could. I also did some fuckery tactics with the drone and the couple zerglings at the start in this particular game. If we react to a guy who's built his production out in the middle of the map and we just mass lings and try to overwhelm it with ling bane like in that first game, it's surprising how many games you can actually win. So the rest of the ladder session after this was really back and forth. I ran into Terran players where I was like, oh, I'm going to try and not commit as much to the attack. I'll do like 15 roaches with roach speed, but I'll drone more and have the fourth gas. And 
go towards the next step. And you know what happened? I actually ran into people who would just rush Battlecruiser. Even though they saw I was two basing, they had no scouting whatsoever. Just completely greedy opening. There, They wouldn't have a Reaper scout. They wouldn't build a bunker in case there was a Roach bush. They'd run in with a Battlecruiser and teleport. And I actually got really angry because I was like, guys, like rule 101 of defending two base builds is you're supposed to not do something like a Battlecruiser. You're meant to get defensive things, build tanks, build marines, get a bunker. You're meant to play safe. No one was playing safe in Grandmaster on the any ladder. And I realized there's a lot of guys, especially in North America, who are just kind of playing their builds and they're not reacting to much. So doing something that's super off meta also gave me a big advantage. And in the games after that game where I lost to the Battlecruiser, I was committing hard to my Roach Bush and I, I, I'd say, yeah, he's going Battlecruiser. I'd say it with the Overseer. I'd wait for the Battlecruiser to pop out, teleport across the map. And then I'd just run in with my roaches and kill it while defending with queens and spores at home. And it wasn't a great defense at home. I'd, I'd have to evacuate a base. I'd, I'd defend at the other base, but I've still got one base mining, another base, two bases up. And I just kill you with roaches. And I killed so many players on the ladder with this build. I ran into Protoss players that just didn't scout for a third base. They just played purely defense. They just proxied me. They just committed to their proxy gate glaive adept all in. And I was like, I'm doing two base roach. There are a lot of players in GM on the NA ladder who aren't scouting and are just doing builds. So I don't know if I would have the same experience if I played on EU, where I think I have a feeling the players are a bit more reactive, but I do think GM on North America right now has great execution and fantastic meta builds. But I also think a lot of the players there are so abusable if you play something that they're not used to playing. It is insane how little scouting and how little reacting even Grandmaster players are doing right now. I'm absolutely flabbergasted. So I'm going to keep on doing these challenges, bringing out these beginner build orders from different parts of Zerg, Terran, and Protoss Promise to Jam onto the ladder, seeing how well they work and identifying kind of flaws in the understanding of a lot of the high level pro players, as well as showing you guys how to adjust these build orders to make them work even at very high level. That's all for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Goodbye and good night.